Father, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, he, you know, the star of American theatre. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. If it's really what you want... It's the perfect solution, Mr. Holmes. Don't you agree? Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will... Brains. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed.
A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. It would be better to examine Wilde's belongings before he returns. Ah, oh, Wilde's already making himself at home. Ah, oh, Wilde's already making himself at home. Wilde truly has a perfect disguise kit. Do actors really need all this? I use the same brushes for makeup. Face powder of an excellent quality. This must be grease paint. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um... You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. No, don't, don't touch that! No, no! Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself.
What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters Ball. Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Were you engaged? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha! A love letter! Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes. Tell her. Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it might help?
Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? Thanks to Wild, my analysis table has been completely destroyed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. Oh, come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it might help?
This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Good quality paper, quite smooth. I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent.
You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He found a crook by the name of Mr. Hosmer Angel, he was paid to make you fall in love and promise your devotion, whereupon he would disappear. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes? You could have been more diplomatic. What is going on? Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh, my God. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. Calm down, Toby. Now, let's see what this contains. It's ticking. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. Taking home a gift from a secret admirer. Whew.
What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? Mr. Holmes, are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. J.T. are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table, if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? <laughs> 